Musketeers 2011 in 3D. Following a few minutes of Assassin's Creed the movie, our three musketeers, followed by Milady, steal the designs for something by Leonardo da Vinci, who by now must be spinning in his grave with all the recent attention, shall we say. Not long after, a plot to bring forth a war between England and France is well underway, and the only people who can stop this from happening are, of course, the Three Musketeers and D'Artagnan. Before I get too into the details, I will address the, the points that I would expect people to be most interested in. This is very much a Paul W.S. Anderson movie, for better or for worse. However, it is also quite possibly the best he's done to date. And it is a movie which you can have fun with. If you turn off your brain, and I'm not just talking about, you know, how, you know, you always say, turn off your brain to enjoy it. You seriously have to turn off your brain. Do not think much at all. And you have a chance of enjoying this. Provided you're not too caught up in that whole historical accuracy thing. I have a theory. I believe that they wrote down everything that was historically accurate and accurate to the book. Then they tossed most of that away. They left, left just a few things intact, and everything else they just pulled straight out of thin air. But yes, it is a fun film. Getting more into it, Paul W.S. Anderson makes numerous mistakes that really I've only seen him make. He sets up things that he does not pay off. He has payoffs to things that were never set up. His action scenes tend to be too short or too long. Most of that is still the case here, but his action has gotten considerably better. This has some of the best action of any Paul W. Anderson film to date. And although you might early on think that with Mila, it's, you know, this whole film is a bit of just, you know, role playing in the bedroom, just turn into a big budget movie, it is actually surprisingly engaging after a while at least at first it's it doesn't really grab you it just it it doesn't feel outright boring it just doesn't really present anything that is terribly new or interesting but after a while i found myself getting into it and mila in 3d and she and every other female and the woman with movie shows cleavage pretty much every time they're seen. You know, this is from the period of time where dressmakers were unsure if everyone was aware that women possessed breasts, so they wanted to keep reminding everyone by designing dresses that way. When Mila in the film's opening minutes dives towards the camera, not only traps are going off. 
the 3D is excellent. It is some of the best since Avatar. It's very, it, it helps with the immersion. You really feel like this is real, like th there is something tangible present. It does not feel the need to jab things directly at the camera terribly often. When it does, some of the some of the attempts at doing so could be more effective. The effects, the CGI in general, is just marvelously done. It looks fantastic. In, in general, just the production value, you know, there is again some questionable camera work by, you know, Paul, not directly, but his direction, but the sets, the costumes, the props, it is almost overwhelming. It is gorgeous. And you can really tell that this is France, you know, back when there was a king, back when, you know, the, it's opulent. Now, one of the most important things about a Three Musketeers movie is, of course, D'Artagnan, especially, the, you know, The Man in the Iron Mask goes a bit of a different route, you know, not showing D'Artagnan when he first shows up, but this one goes back to that kind of, you know, pretty early on we are introduced to D'Artagnan and then he meets the Three Musketeers. And they, in fact, keep a scene intact that I'm told was also in the book. I have not read it. I'm not going to give it away, but I like that they included it. Now, the D'Artagnan is, of course, very important to a Three Musketeers movie. This one is quite good. At first... Okay, let's be perfectly honest, he does not have a lot of personality. No one in this movie does. No one in Paul W. S. Anderson movie do, you know, does do. Whatever. Grammar. That's just, you know, it, it goes with the territory. Be prepared for a Paul W. S. Anderson movie. However, the actor is pretty decent. He has some charm to him. He's not obnoxious. And just, you know, you find yourself wanting to see him succeed. This goes both for, you know, the acting, I guess also for the appearance, and, you know, just the, the writing, the way he behaves. And his love interest is also quite nicely done. And also a charming young woman. The Three Musketeers themselves are also, of course, important, and they are quite well played. Frank Castle uh, of Punisher Warzone being one of them. Unfortunately, he is more like the obese god in Thor, but still, it was fun to see him. And heck, he was fun in Thor, too. And Angus McFadden, again, I think that's, a, that's... It appears to be how it's spelled. I would go with McFadden if it wasn't for the spelling. Anyway, is really great. You can really tell this sort of... There's, there's an intensity to him that really adds to it. And there's a reason for that intensity, and I will not reveal it. Mila herself is, of course, I don't think it's really a secret from, you know, trailers and just talk about the movie. She is a spy, a bit of a double agent in the film, and this is one of her most suited roles in any Paul W. S. Anderson film. You know, she was fine as Alice, but it was not that interesting of a part. But here, she really because she can pull it off. She can be, she can come off as very deceiving and manipulative 
and you know charming when she wants to be and that whole thing and it really works for her except for when they have her laugh a lot especially early on somewhat awkwardly I don't know I that really yeah just stood out like a sore thumb maybe it was supposed to but bad directing choice Paul the general cast is really really good we have Christoph Waltz the Jew hunter as Richelieu. When I saw that he was cast as Richelieu, I, it was just, it's so obvious. Of course, it's, it's perfect casting, and it really works for the film. There are these scenes where he has to pretend to be on the king's side, you know, when the king is present, and you can just see just the you know, the the hatred and the just, oh, I would rule so much better than you in his eyes every single second, you know, without it being overplayed either, which I suppose the Jew Hunter was a bit. The Danish whose name escapes me at the moment, who plays Captain Roche Four, makes for a great sort of villain. He is the Cardinal's right eye, I mean hand. And he's just a great villain because we love to hate him, you know. He may not be the greatest actor, which I'm not saying he isn't, because he is pretty good, but he is just great at being despicable. You just hate him and you want to see him go down and that's you know that's what this movie you know that's what this sort of movie needs and he provides it mass mickelson i believe is his name i won't go too much more into the cast but it really is fantastic the king needs mentioning he just he's asked to do a bit much but he really does more or less pull it off. In fact, I think I should just go ahead and say, because it's not particularly a spoiler, when you first see the king, he is very effeminate. He has no perspective. He's basically comic relief. You know, he is one of these royalty from that period of history who just has no idea how Everyone working for them has it so much harder than they do. And, you know, the real state of affairs, just, they're oblivious. He does this quite well. And, you know, we do find him genuinely pathetic. But then he is also meant to be a sort of sweet, awkward young man who is in love. This again, the actor plays it well. But the film asks for too much because we've just been laughing at him, mocking him. And suddenly we're supposed to sort of side with him. And it goes back and forth between these two. Again, Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah. The, the pacing is also somewhat off. The plot is excessively convoluted, and if you stop and think about things, it does not hold up. There are, you know, events and actions that really don't make sense. That were just, you know, because they needed that to create a certain situation, and that's what they did. Returning to the action, not all of the good moments are in the trailer, trust me, excuse me, and it really does create a couple of really outstanding and really memorable and really worth watching scenes of action. I will not give away what they are. I will say that those going to 
watch this movie in hopes of a duel will not be entirely disappointed. Just wait for it. And the fencing in general is really great. And I'm very pleased to see that Paul has learned that slow motion is not necessarily something that makes an action scene, although he apparently took a note from 300 because there's a brief bit of fencing where it alternately slows down and speeds up for no good reason. In 300, that looked really good. It was stylish. It was like, here it isn't. So, yeah. With so many important characters, of course, you know, each of them have to get some time to, you know, for them to even matter and for them to have an impact for us to remember them. And again, Paul does better at this than he usually does. Pretty much any other movie I've seen by him that I could compare this to, he did it worse there than he does here. You know, it... It obviously is first and foremost D'Artagnan's story, with the Three Musketeers as big side characters, important side characters. And, you know, Rochefort and Richelieu as, you know, the main baddies. And it really works as that. I suppose that is about what there is to say about the movie. So, once again, probably Paul's best, but very much one of his films. He still hasn't learned everything that, you know, he's still making some of the same, many of the same mistakes. But if he can at least keep making movies that are as entertaining as this one, then I for one can overlook gaping plot holes and disregard for historical accuracy and the source material that he's adapting. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.